And we are live Wednesday night with those guys. And Wednesday night with those guys is sponsored by those guys. guys. Just got the alert. Got the alert on my phone. I guess we are live. Yeah, What's up, Herman? How are you? How are you? I, I'm good. I'm sitting here talking in the chat with Drone Shots. He was asking if I got my computer fixed. In fact, Drone Shots, here's the USB zip drive that I had to purchase, even though I had plenty of them laying around. They, they're all gone. But I had to purchase one, and this will make my computer bootable. Here's the solid-state drive that I'm going to put in, and God damn it, I'm going to do this myself. <laughs> Because I can't rely on other people to come do it when I asked for their help. So, and I appreciate, hey, what's up, Stefan? Hey, Stefan, we got a, we got another pet peeve to talk about tonight. I like that video you did on the um, Fly app and the satellite. Well, we got another pet peeve you guys are going to love. Yes, that's I saw that video. I salute you, out. sir. I was like, okay, here we go, because... Man, I was cursing that app. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bill, what's up? So, oh, Bill from coast to coast. Oh, what's up? So Bill? we 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 are going to get shots. into it. We have a lot to talk about tonight. We have a little, a, a lot of, a little bit of everything, but it, it's all compressed, and and you guys hey, should like it. But a little of this, a little of that, much of nothing. <laughs> How the hell is everybody? How is your week so far? Today's hump day. If you are in the UK, I know it's in the evening, late evening. This is dinner time. And if you're also in Australia, it's also breakfast time. So not only do we have an evening stream, but we have a, a morning stream too. That's kind of cool. What a Michael thing. McReynolds, how are you? What's up? You know what, Lawrence? I've been so busy. Free El Smeghead. <laughs> I've been I've been I've been running around doing this, doing that, had to, you know, and still make my appointments and 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 the stuff. And the issue with the cars, both cars. Yeah, and yeah, both cars. Well, not, well you know my my car. Hey uh, fly zone. Hey, what's I up, man? Some problems and it's it's nothing serious. Uh I just had had to get it done in Okay, can, it, I, so. can I put a disclaimer out there real quick? What? Mikey, Fly Zone Drones, I like to apologize for not making your stream on Friday, but I was drunk as a fuck Friday night. It, it, Dude, I was done. There was no way I was cutting the computer back What's on. So What's I, up? I like to apologize. <laughs> What's up, Wells <laughs> Rob? <laughs> Fly Zone Drones. What happened? <laughs> no, it's here. What's up to the guys in the <laughs> Someone told me Stefan is a government agent. I forget who though. Hey. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. It's good to have it's good to have government officials in, as a friends. Trust me. Yeah. We know here in New York. Well, it depends on what part of the government we talk about. True. That's true too. A very valid point. But how's everyone? And and Welsh Rob, you're never late, man. You're never late. We yeah, appreciate you guys coming. Listen, there's 13 people watching, and that's not including the lurkers. 14. Please click that like button. What's up, JSK? How are you, sir? JSK. Everybody, if you can click that like button early when you come in. You don't have to remember to do it on the way out. Lawrence, Welsh Rob mm -hmm. is all over facebook i mean my god the, the alerts just keep on coming <laughs> dude i i there's just sometimes i have to cut my i understand i have to cut my alerts off because i'll be sitting there i'm trying to talk serious with someone and then you'll hear Loo -loo. so you can ignore that but then after you talk for another 30 seconds and you hear Loo -loo, it, it's time to make put your shit silent <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing like live streaming when you're wasted Else Meghead, you do. You, you, your videos are funny. Carpenter Rick, what's good? Click that what's like up, button. Right? We still only got one like, and I'm the only one that did it. Come on. No, guys. you gotta refresh your page, bro. Damn, no worries. No, no, Mike. It's only seven. You don't, oh, okay. <laughs> Mike, you fly zone drone. You don't understand. I was I was lit. It was time to go nighty night at about 8:30, quarter to nine. Oh, that's the best time to get started. 
No, man, I was already alleviated. <laughs> and well, then I got an alert and I opened my eyes and I looked, I was like, which phone do I look at? And I and just put it back down. Oh, and wait till, wait till yeah, football wait season, back. Sunday yeah. night with those guys. Yeah, I know. I'm going to be competing with football. It's Rob with the big burger. <laughs> Welsh Rob. Okay, gotcha. But anyway, hope Did you guys you have had a... What happened? Did he send you that picture? No. No. No, he didn't. <laughs> they can't make too many of those in one restaurant. Oh, yes, he did. He did send me that that that, that, that monster freaking... The burger looked like it had a small child laying between it. You need a so room big. just to keep the buns in. Man, you could that's a lifetime supply of freaking meat that was in that burger. Welsh Rob posted. I, I did I did see that picture. <laughs> but it was funny though, because somebody would have tried it, would try to eat it. Yeah, a couple of people. Hey, I would have been there the same if I had got all drunken. No, you don't understand. I, I was when when you're sitting down and the room is moving, it's time to go to bed. It's time to say nighty night. Eat something and take your ass to bed. <laughs> you know, when the room starts moving, you are either like, you know, you're right there at that point where if you stay around, you're going to start cursing people. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is true. That's true. Or every other word that comes out your mouth is a, is a curse. So yeah, something I, like that. I hope everyone has had a great week. Herman and I wanted to talk about something. We're trying to wait for a few people to get in, to, to get in here and, and fill in. But in fact, let me refresh this page because which page? I'm still oh. looking at the freak. Oh, it's 12. Okay, thanks. What thanks. Happened? We appreciate you. I never refreshed the page. So what happened? How I could see the chat in, in real time, but for some reason, our video was like major delayed. I, and I, it didn't dawn on me because I'm learning not to pay attention to that video there on the screen. But the real time ones, if you see me look up, it's only out of habit when I hear you talk, but I have to learn to look at the camera and the people. Oh, well, that's why you should put classic. How are you, sir? That's why I put the camera in line with the, the with real monitor. feed. I'd like so to do that. that. Then you would see all the shit behind me. So, so is that <laughs> everybody that I'm, <laughs> that I'm talking that's to? Specifically why. And also, you know how it is in the summer. At some yeah, time, wouldn't be able point, to see you. at some time and point, the sun will be on an angle that when we do our live stream at about 515, 520, 530, the sun will be beaming straight through and I'll have to put shades on. You remember, because it, it's right now it's shining, it's reflecting off of the porcelain floor and it, it's, it's sunny, it's cloudy, a little cloudy, a mix of cloud and sun, but it's bright enough. In fact, I cut this light off. This is this is actual natural light. I cut this light off. You can 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 barely tell. Did I see Eddie Nunez in here? Hey, what's up, hey, Eddie? Eddie. Right there. He's, he's I in there. have to compliment you, Eddie. The last video you put out, he was cruising. Herman, yeah, the man was a low on the deck. He was cruising faster than 50 miles an hour, 40, 50 miles an hour. And I was really enjoying that. Johnny Drone Flyer, what's up? How are you, sir? The last video that hey, Eddie Johnny. put out was him cruising around this, this area where like, there's enough room to, to stretch your legs out. It's a pretty big area. But Eddie, congrats on getting low on the deck and getting that camera angle up so you could get that speed. He's, he's becoming a, a great cruiser. Johnny and uh, what's that? Uh, Captain Ray, they got a nice little thing going on over there. Yeah, yeah, they they had me on uh, the show with them. It's a couple of weeks ago. I was there after, I was after, there. after our live stream. Okay. Yeah, it was fun. I, I, I was there. I thought that was quite nice. Which, by the way, on the twenty sixth of this month, today's the twelfth, but on the twenty sixth of this month, um, I'm actually going to be on there after your live stream oh, okay yeah so they've invited me to come on i look forward to it i actually hit up ray kelly captain ray kelly 
or yeah. asked him, yo, tomorrow I'm going flying out here along the beach if you're interested. And he was, it was too short a notice, oh, but I'm going to try and shoot for next week, Thursday. Okay. So if you're in the New York City metropolitan area, what time? Fly what out here. Huh? What time you guys thinking? Um, <laughs> I'm thinking, well, if Rob C, I was hoping he came in the chat so we could plan it. Hey, Michael Blades, but Probably between eight and nine ish, because Rob C comes straight from work. He's a fireman. He works overnight. Mm -hmm. And last time I met him, he was like there an hour before I even came. So I'm figuring about eight or nine a.m. Stretching it at nine a.m. So I'll be there tomorrow out on the beach. If you want to know where exactly, uh, actually, I'm lying. I'm not going to be on the beach. I'm going to the train bridge. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's where we were going. I'm so used to saying I'm flying on the beach, but this whole peninsula is a beach, so technically it counts. Well, um, <laughs> what, what are you flying, though, tomorrow? Michael Blades, good luck. Fly safe. Michael, what, what, are, you, um, what are you flying tomorrow? Oh, my um, my Air 2. My, my, oh, okay. my, my 2S. Okay. I'm taking. I, I actually have the batteries i'm going to char- start charging them which mm-hmm. fyi i don't see why the tiny little battery takes longer to charge than my phantom 4 pro batteries but that's another story in itself so we get started with this this peeve about the um fly app? we could i mean like i said to you before and i noticed these things right away when i first hey, you started, when i first started the drone did all the updates and everything and i got into the app and i said this thing is very limited and the information and talking about which drone the air 2s yeah. yes i, mean, so I, just, I, mean, I, I just guess it would be whatever flew on that app would have that issue but um it's very limited and what it does give on the screen in comparison to the Go4 app, uh, I don't know how to put it, but it's just not adequate. I don't, it's, it's something I guess I would have to get comfortable with because I, I'm not comfortable with the, the with the telemetry and the way it's laid out and the way it's given. Also, when you start getting into the, the workings of it and the settings and how uh, the different parameters of things working in the drone, especially as far as hey, the Tom. camera. What's up, Tom? As far as the camera is concerned, that's there's some limitations there, and, I, and I'm not even getting into with the the aperture. We've gotten past that. It's just certain ways on how it functions. Like also, we had we both mentioned that we didn't like the issue with the battery. Well, that's that's what that's the, the that is my main peeve with it. Um, those of you who know the flyby guy, Stefan for the flyby guys, last week he came out with a bit a video that he hopes and I, I hope it goes from his mouth to DJI's ears. And he had a major complaint about the fly app. And it is in that video he pointed out how tiny the satellites it shows a sat- satellite logo, mm-hmm. but the the font for the satellite is so tiny unless there's no contrast on. also there's no contrast okay yeah so yeah w- what do we do we fly in the sky okay right now 12 hours of the day normally the sky is bright what color yeah. is that uh textual content okay so <laughs> i'm i have trouble seeing it well, this this was Stefan's yeah. um, point. He was trying yeah. to make it from the flyby guys that hey, DJI, everything else is big enough. Why did you shrink down? Like most it. a most critical part of logistics that you need because if I can see that I went from twenty three satellites down to four, mm-hmm. I'd say, oops, there's a problem. Maybe you you understand what I'm saying? Right, now, right. The pet peeve that I personally have with the the fly app is, and that's with the um, Air 2S, because I'm still learning it and everything. But I was out flying. And you know how when we have the Go4 app with, with the Phantom and, and the Mavic series or whatever that yeah, uses the Go4 app, you can see at 30%, it says, hey, 
I think you should turn around and come home because if you don't, I'm going to do it for you. Well, in the Fly app, it doesn't do that. I was looking at my battery and I said, I have about 40 something percent. So I went to fly. I did a few things. I did a few maneuvers. I came back and, and I was on my way back and I immediately looked at the battery and it would from that 40% because while I was doing the power went down, yeah. I looked and it was at 27%. So I'm like, well, when is the low battery warning going to kick in? So I started bringing it back. We were at Calvert Box Park. And I started bringing it back towards me. And now I'm just hanging around and I just have it hovering. I'm waiting for the low battery to kick in. Apparently, at 20, I landed at 24. Mm -hmm. But I had pointed out this issue to Herman once before that the issue is it kicks in at 20%. And 20% technically may not be enough for you to get home, depending on where you're flying from. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to say the disclaimer first, and then and then I'll go on to what I'm what I'm the point I'm getting to is the, the views and opinions that are heard tonight are not necessarily the views and opinions of everyone on the panel and or in the chat. But come on, DJI, that app sucks. <laughs> now maybe it's either. not Tom. Correct me. Maybe it's because we're more, we're used to a more detailed app in the Go Four, and I'm I'm actually switching operating systems. The Go Four app, which I use on my Mavic Pro and my Phantom Four Pro, mm -hmm. to the Fly app. Well, you have more control with the with the Go Four app. Well, it, look, look, the interface has to change regardless. Mm -hmm. The Fly app is used on the consumer range drones, mm -hmm. but are we still considering the Air 2S to really be consumer? I would say it's more on the lines of prosumer. Well, at least exactly. give me more functionality. Well, see, uh, the interface is not intuitive. I agree with you on the battery indicator. You can click on the battery indicator, it will open up, it will show you other telemetry. Mm -hmm. But again, let's get the basics down. You can't pat. change it, though. I like the, my 30%. I would like to know. At I, I understand that. But that's, look, on your expensive cameras, okay? Mm -hmm. let, let's just, uh, let me just put out an analogy there. Eddie Nunez okay? says he's not a fan of the app either. No, absolutely not. When you have a very expensive uh, SLR, okay, digital SLR camera in your hand, mm -hmm. And next to it, you have an entry-level SLR. Now, they right. both shoot images. Mm -hmm. What's the big difference from the body? Well, on the lower-end camera, there are less buttons. There are less external yeah. selections. Right. Right. Of course, you got a menu dive, okay, to get to damn anything. And, and that is troubling to a pro because a pro, you want to be able to access those features quickly and get the shot you're looking for, right? So that's why you'll see on a pro-level body, there's a lot of controls, external controls. Mm -hmm. Now, now that's the analogy I'm painting is the Fly app to the Go Floor app, okay? Right. More so it's two different if you look at the Fly ever. app, the Go Floor app. So I look at the Fly app as, an, as a Nikon, uh, you know, 3500. Mm -hmm. I, I look at the Go Floor app as maybe you know, a, a D500. And, and then I look at the pilot app, you know, as, you know, for the D6 or, or whatever the latest Mark, whatever, what Mark 42 there is on a Canon camera by this point, right? So uh, just goofing on Eddie. Uh, but look, it, it's, it's, there's not enough capability in the Fly app and to leverage a drone like the 2 or the 2S in the Fly app is very limiting, I think. Okay. Well, you know, we were talking about it because, okay, you know, like when Lawrence was talking about the battery. In, and you know, uh, you know, Calvert Box part. You yeah, know, very just well. before you don't, you know, the little, um, the little bump out just before you go to the second gate to the airfield? Yes. Okay. So we, to the we left. were right yeah. there. We were right yeah, there, yeah. so we're right across in front of where the old, where the boats, where the where that boat is sunk, the sub, and everything. Where like the sub is, the yellow right. submarine. Yeah, my drone clicked, cut, clicked into re return to home, right over the submarine area. 
went up the 400 feet and came back to us. Yeah, he was already on the way back home. And also he noticed his battery was low, lower than 30%. So he said, I'm going to come in. And on the way home, it just stopped. And Herman was like, huh? And he well, looked did you get because it was close enough. No and warning. It straight in the return to home. And, no and warning. They said it that it in. was going in. It was returning to home. Oh, yeah. so, so it did warn you on screen that it had entered return to home mode. Yes. Yes. Oh, it didn't, yes. So, it of course, didn't you can me, cancel I, that. Now. Right. I don't have, like the fact that, that it doesn't give you. We can't set our own parameter to say, okay, this is your low, your low battery warning. And before the. That's you know, limitations. The limitations of the application like i right. said which i believe with enough participation and you know guys it's like anything else if you participate in the process you might get something out of it get up on on you know get up on the forums with this kind of stuff okay because enough people moaning and groaning about it uh, this is a simple as far as i'm concerned they can provide you the opportunity to to manipulate the variables within the return to home feature set okay it's not a heavy stretch here what we're talking about basically is you being able to set whether you want it at 20 percent or 30 mm percent -hmm. yes okay yes now right. now you know but keep in mind a warning keep in mind <laughs> that that countdown clock is, is contingent upon the way you're flying at the time True. okay right. it's just like your fuel economy when you're driving when you're hammering that pedal, your fuel economy, your instantaneous readout looks like crap. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But when you're in cruise control, it looks like, you know, you're, you're driving a hybrid. Okay? Right. What so I'm, the same I'm... thing's going to happen here. So when you mm -hmm. look, when you look and you're flying, say, at about 20 miles an hour, pretty steady, you're going to get good fuel economy. When you're hovering, you're going to get crappy fuel economy. So... That percentage, you got to watch real closely. Like you said, Lawrence, that can drop out from Monday pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That, that, that thing is, my I point. like the fact of being able to have my own low battery warning before they give me a critical battery warning and then it returns yes. to home. Yeah. Well, well, we have the same problems <laughs> with the on the FPV side of the fence now with the latest, you know, the DJI FPV. The yeah. same thing. It's like all or nothing, man. Here we go. Uh, but <laughs> so, you know, and, and you know how that is in the FPV world. You, you, you want to know what's happening before it happens. Mm -hmm. True. But now, now, one one thing that we have to clamor for is the ability to set that. Now, let me ask you one other question. You said Wasn't it raised it? up to 400 feet. Did you yeah. set the 400 feet? Yeah. Oh, OK. Because, you yeah, know, here's my concern, people, and you got to realize something. When you set your return to home altitudes, and, and Herman knows this. We've talked through this in the past. When you set your return to home altitudes, that's based on your specific location. Okay. Mm -hmm. And be careful, especially now with this Air 2S. And I'm going to caution you. Don't set the highest you can set because exactly. when Leave it runs down there. low and it ascends, which it has really no problem doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really it's fast. Descent. That's going to chew up battery. Okay. So now when it has to descend from 400 feet, because it's entering its own thrust columns, it's trying mm -hmm. to lower itself in mm -hmm. its own thrust columns. It uses up a lot more battery. So, you know, be dynamic with your settings when it comes to those return to home. You know, I that's was, one of those things, right, Herman? We talked about doing the checklist. Right. You know, was hand, surprised. We look at what's around us. I was, surprised, it to the I was surprised that it, it actually went into a return to home so damn close to me. Yeah, that's what caught you by surprise. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Term, yeah. Said, Hold on. What, what, what? Yeah. And it, Where it are you said, going? Yeah. It said returning home. Now, on the Go4 app, and when it hits 30%, you get a pre-warning. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Now, now I'm I'm used to that particular app. No, hey, you're Roxy. used to no, you're used to that capability also being provided. Mm -hmm. Okay, for right. that series of drones. And remember, your last taste of this was what you were flying the the Mavic Two or the Phantom. So the Mavic, the Mavic Pro, the Mavic. Yeah, still, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Mavic Two Pro. Yeah. Yeah. So you know you're used to you're used to the Go app. OK, you guys are just it's getting true. your feet wet in the fly app operating system and, and join. Just join the choir. No, this we is don't like, like it. 
You know what this is okay. like? This is like my Bentley's got a problem, so they gave me this bullshit Toyota to drive around to my Bentley's. Hey, it's a loner, dude. <laughs> the good thing is you're bringing it back. This, you got to hope while you're driving, they put some big 20s on there, okay? And then at the next stoplight, you get a whole new interior. Uh, you know, that's what you're hoping for here. This is this is sad but true, but we wanted to bring up the issue because, seat, like I said, um, Stefan from the, the flyby guys brought up the issue that the satellite reading in the upper right hand corner yeah. is well, is see, way too small, and and yeah. the satellite is a crucial piece of logistics. Mm -hmm. Just We're like talking the about altitude, your speed that that needs to be seen, and so so the satellite, of course, is the icon in the all the way in the upper right hand corner mm -hmm. and next to it in superscript mm -hmm. is the number of satellites you're connected to now well, now tell me what genius what genius yeah. thought making that first off you can't even write legal contracts in that font size okay so i know i know it, it, it's like two point type if that now we're talking about two point type on a screen that's made up of pixels uh -huh. And then you're talking about light colored type white on a light blue sky, mm -hmm. which if it's overexposed by a quarter of a stop, looks white on your screen. All right. And then you have the glare of the sun coming down on your monitor. You don't have a hope in hell to know how many satellites you're connected to. Okay. Now, Simple things, the guy simple that did things. The terms of agreement did that. Yeah, but see, see, here's what troubles me. You have an engineering department that builds the motors, the group that handles the ESC circuitry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The GIS group that yeah, manages that. the GPS and GLONASS. Yes. Where the hell is the interface, the user interface gang? Take them out and smack them around the world. It's the same, okay? it's the same guy that does the terms of agreement. Yeah. I, I don't know. Do any of you guys still get Chinese up on some of your warnings? Because I do. And that was not the I haven't, I, I haven't seen any, but I've heard oh. of people talking about yeah. it. It's I have heard quite people often. mention it. How often does it happen, though? But well, I, will, I will say before, and, and I see why people have flyaways. Like that, Adrian. Because if you don't know this about DJI, <laughs> when that bird is last tested for its home spot, it's in Beijing, China. I pulled up the map on my bird before I updated it mm -hmm. to, to test this theory and return to home was set for Beijing, well, China. Well, I got to say, man, if it makes it back <laughs> on that freaking battery, man, that'd be groundbreaking, okay? You're going into the Guinness Book. Uh, look, you need to pre-check mm -hmm. your aircraft before you fly it. And notice I use the term aircraft, Okay. We, we moan and groan about what happens in manned aviation, take responsibility in unmanned aviation, and check out your drone before you fly it. Go through the settings. Be familiar with the menu system. Learning the menu while you're flying is counterproductive to that drone oh, coming you back know, home. Tom, you're okay? absolutely right. I sat here for days playing with this thing and complained about it before I took the drone up in the air. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. And, and, and but I will admit that DJI Air 2S and, and you can't say Mavic Air 2. It's, it's the Air 2S. Damn it's so freaking nimble. Stevie, um, Stevie Bronx Capture Life Connections came and met us over there. He had a, in, a, some work doing to do in the morning and he came mm -hmm. and met us and he was just hovering with the FPV bird. And Herman was able to do, I would say maybe it was a 10 foot radius um, orbit around him, like nothing. I said, and I asked him, did you use the smart oh, Johnny. No, I did it manually. The bird moves very, very smoothly. Oh, like, I know how to fly, dude. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man, I know. Uh, I know. You're, you're one of the few people that does everything manually like I do. Like Tom does, and I'm if you afraid to let the drone do that itself, man. Hey, well, and you know, I I find I find uh, like an orbit, right? I, I mm. find it to be a lot smoother when I'm doing it. Yeah. Than yeah. when I let the you know the the intelligent flight modes do it. Well, uh, I agree. 
a lot of times, not all times. Now, now what I will say is things that you got to really try, guys, mm -hmm. that I think you're going to enjoy Waypoint. are like spotlight mode. So, so now think about it this way. It, it's not a matter of, you know, just putting this on and letting the bird hover around it. The thing is, in spotlight mode, you can put your target on your item and then fly it free fly, flight. And the whole time you're flying free flight, okay, the camera maintains the target. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you can get, you know, those three axis moves okay. using, like, spotlight mode. It, it's something to check out. So I, I'm not saying abandon all features that come with the drone. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yes, the best thing, of course, and I think the point we want to make is learn how to fly manually, you know, learn how to make some of those maneuvers manually, and then, then use some of the, the intelligent flight modes and see if they see if they provide your benefit in what in I agree with you, Dom, because yeah. an intelligent flight mode, they, even though they do have something called the boomerang, what I like to do often now is Herman started me into doing this. Herman used to take a, an object and do, instead of doing a regular orbit, he would do a helical. Yeah, sure. And rise up. Now I've kind of taken that same mode of doing a helical but starting out wide and on some points coming in tight and doing more of an elliptical. So an ellip, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. But but with, that's why a mode like Laura, it's a mode like that spotlight mode mm -hmm. on the active track. Will, yeah. will will actually blow you away on that because you Get can out of build here. See, in. I haven't tried. I haven't you tried. You can yet. build in like three axis moves while the drone is handling one axis. Okay, for you keeping the camera on the. You, you can turn around you can and focus it, on the yeah, on yeah the exactly flying. yeah it, it's almost like you know if you do it right it's almost like having that cameraman okay yeah okay so so you know that that can be very helpful uh so so i'm not saying abandon all those intelligent features just learn how to use the drone okay oh. uh, learn how to fly the drone it's See. just like i think we've talked about it before right depending sure. on if you're going to play sports Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, with hockey, uh, <laughs> if you don't know how to skate, right? Yeah. Okay. You you're only ever going to be able to play field hockey. You'll For never sure. be able to get on the ice or on blade or roller blades no. and play inline hockey. So learn how to skate, then learn how to handle the stick, then put the two items together Man, and you'll become competitive. The same thing here. It's just a matter of uh, practicing what that bird brings to the table. Leveraging. Right. Right. And I see too many people going out and buying new drones like the they haven't even too, used the features on the drones they, they have. Exactly. My yeah, point. Sure well, have. it's it, come on. Guys come on. Fly, talk. Well, Tom, guys fly all the way over to, you know, the other side Bayonne, of New Flushman, Jersey. Or, yeah. Or even the Bayonne and hit the return to home button. That's a feature on the drone. Well, hey, hey it works. OK. okay. Hey, whatever works for you. OK. I mean, look. I've seen a, a lot of guys fly far away and then hit the return home button. Well, it's much like rolling the dice, okay, playing roulette. Uh, yeah. You know, playing roulette or rolling <laughs> the dice and craps or, you, yeah, yeah, you might hit big, okay? But the problem <laughs> is if you don't recover your drone, okay, all that footage goes to waste. Uh, like that you know, guy, we were, we were at Flushing, Lawrence and Matt, one, I don't remember his name, the guy said to me, he goes, do you know where my drone is? I said, well, what happened to it? He goes, I was trying to fly to the other side of the park and it went into return to home. I don't know where it is. I'm like, well, what's the camera showing you? He goes, I can't see anything. Look, you take it. And he handed me the controls <laughs> and his phone. And I'm like, looks like the, the camera was like cocked to the to the side. He had the uh, the old, uh, the original air. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it came back, though. <laughs> Made it back. Well, uh, well, again, you know, like you tell people when they start. I agree, on. Johnny Drone Flyer. Learn to fly. That's the number one thing. Number one thing. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, and, you know, yeah. look, there's, uh, I'm sorry, there's no excuse. No. Nope. Okay. No excuse. Because 
and, and I understand you might not have a group of people to okay. hook up with and have a meet up with and try to, you know, scrape their knowledge. But damn, look at the platform we're on right now, YouTube. True. Tell me, tell me you can't throw a stone, a pebble, and hit nothing but a huge mountain full of information. Okay? I agree. So, so I you know, agree. that's what you got to do. You got to learn how to use the tool. It's just like photography enthusiasts, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to buy the latest camera body. Uh, dude, spend all the money you want. It's not going to make you a better photographer. Okay? Uh, I'm going to buy the latest drone. The latest drone isn't going to make your footage better. Okay? Start somewhere. Learn the fundamentals, <laughs> right? We, we always say the same thing, right? The, the best camera is the one you have with you, and that's why iPhones are freaking... Yeah. You know, there's yeah, so much but, iPhone photography. Yeah, but, but Tom, they got to start somewhere, and if they don't have. Oh, it, absolutely. I mean, a starting somewhere and staying there long enough <laughs> to learn what the damn drone can do for you. Yeah. Before, I, I agree. look, look, look. Right. I agree. It, it, it's Absolute. the guy walking down the street with the supermodel on his arm, mm -hmm. and another woman passes him, and he turns his head and looks. Okay. Uh, use Easy. what you What's got. Up? What's Use up, what man? you got, okay? <laughs> yeah, well, so pretty much. So pretty people, freaking okay, much. Tom, watch this. I, I, I might have mentioned this before. I got a phone call from a guy. You know, I, so I, I, I find things a lot. I got a call from a guy that I know. He told me, he goes, he wants to get a drone. I was like, okay. He goes, what's the best drone for somebody who's never had a drone before? I said, well... <laughs> I mean, they have all different kinds of things. We got the, there's a mini that, that's out. They have also the uh, the Air 2 that's out. I mean, and if you wanted to get into something that was out before that, that might be a little bit better than that. I mean, there's stuff out there for that too. So he goes, I checked out that mini and I checked out the, the, um, the Air, the Air 2. And he goes, no, nah, I don't want that. That's not good enough for me. I'm, I'm like, Okay, well, what what can you know? Like, I mean, there's other drones. He goes, he goes. Well, I already ordered an Inspire two, and I'm like, <laughs> what? He already has a couple of uh, movie contracts too, right? I and said, he joined he the uh, ordered an Inspire two. He right. goes, yeah, he joined the Association Inspire of uh, motion, motion Picture yeah. Photographers, and he's he's all lined up with his union card. And well, hold, hold on, let me let me tell you let me tell you the full story. So I said, um, so what are you going to do with this? He goes, well, I want to shoot my rap videos. I'm like, okay, well, well, here's the deal. You to 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 do that, you need to get your part 107 so you can do these videos in furtherance of a business. He goes, no, it's not for a business. It's for my rap videos. I'm like. Mm -hmm. Okay, I said, but yeah, but you can't you can't use these videos in furtherance of a business. He goes, it's not a business; it's my rap career. I'm like, okay, but it, you cannot use these <laughs> videos. <laughs> uh, you can't so give he, these videos got... to anyone to 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 do any business with. Right, exactly. There he is goes, an upside to so this. So then he goes, oh, I see what you're talking about. D but there's another upside. Because when he's flying this drone and goes into the crowd of his boys and everybody in the video, they're going to have more scars for their street credibility when that thing smacks them across the face. Yeah, that's, you know? that's after Jacoby Myers comes in and makes them all rich <laughs> except for him. Except for okay? him. <laughs> except for him. Okay? Like, you know, those videos a few months later with the scars and all that, you know, get that look going. Real blood drawing. Yeah, okay, yeah. The latest rap video, real blood drawn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On the after, high side. After well, they we get an aerial. After yeah. the ER trip. Yeah. 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 But what he, would they call he, that? 52 he, stitches? Yeah, you just <laughs> couldn't, couldn't understand stitches, furtherance of okay. a business. 48 bars with 52 stitches. That's right. <laughs> and my boys were all there. Okay. <laughs> it all right. works. There's always a silver look, lining, right? Look, look, look. It's always you're always going to have the people chasing it mm. that know very little about it. But the more expensive one they buy, they believe it brings cred. And it doesn't. And, and it, then it becomes nothing but a, a, a dust collector on a shelf someplace. Because mm -hmm. come on, if he's got if, if this is the first drone he owns 
I can't even see him getting it out of the box. Okay. You know, uh, that, just, just that putting is, those props on the wrong way once off. is yep. going to be a very expensive proposition. Okay. <laughs> I and, thought I jumped the gun when I bought the Phantom 4. When I started to see what other people started with, I was like, wow, I really, I really OD'd with this purchase because wanna, the, the Phantom 4 was an amazing drone. I want to yeah, see it take off. And then when you start looking at, you know, you know, you see stories of other people when they started and what drones they started with and they tying GoPros to stuff and everything. I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of jump started this a little too well, quick. Well, <laughs> yeah, Stevie, I was I was looking at the Inspire and, and was talked into the Phantom 4 Pro because I was going to jump into an Inspire with a, you know, at that point in time, I, I really couldn't afford the five the X5S, you know, so I was going to just go with the X4 uh, uh, Zen Muse camera, <laughs> no which is problem, nothing I'll more than it. a Phantom 4 Pro camera. Uh, right. You know, so I saved a small fortune there, got a lot more airtime with it than I ever would with an Inspire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And an Inspire is a, it's a freaking commitment when you go to fly it. And it's intimidating. Okay. You ain't you. You're not popping it out of the box and you know burning some packs here. That's not what we're talking about. Okay, yeah, it's, it's uh, just using the Ascendance it's remote. Okay, uh, it takes a bit of uh, a legwork to figure out. What's so, up, Eddie? You know. Well, yeah, but uh, the thing about the Inspire is that doing as, videos. Eddie people, Eddie's an Inspire owner. Yeah, the thing about the, the Inspire is that living in the city. It's very intimidating. The Phantom is kind of intimidating, you know, um, but you see that thing take off and, and, you know, you people that that don't know much about drones. That's a huge red flag, that thing going up. And uh, especially if you yeah, it doesn't, it, it, yeah, yeah. the hell back too. <laughs> that's not going unnoticed. You know, yeah. I, used to, yeah. I used to think that about the Phantom. TV, that and the DJI FPV, two things that don't go unnoticed. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's see what Stevie's flying. That's true. Because Stevie be on a throttle like someone's chasing him. <laughs> uh, there's only one way to fly that bird. It's yeah. heavy on the throttle. Okay. No, I, I, I'm smoothing it out. But the day that I went to meet up with uh, with Herman and Lawrence, I, I think that was the first time um, Herman seen it in person, right? Or oh, both of you. Yeah. Yeah. And he said no, he's, it was Herman. And he said Herman. he's uh, afraid to fly his Inspire. He's scared to fly his around here. One thing Herman, I remember Herman saying is, that thing is loud. <laughs> it, was like, yeah. it was screaming yeah. past us screaming. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, that's what i was talking about when i first started flying it i would find these areas that there was nobody at and before and after you had i'm crowd. putting in a second battery somebody's <laughs> yeah. coming out of the woods with a dog like i heard yeah. that from the i heard that the park yeah. like eight yeah. miles away eddie put he said i wear a cnn shirt when i fly mine or in a New York post tag. <laughs> and a New York post tag. Yeah, that's what you got to do, man. <laughs> For real, you got to have like a media tag on. Yeah. Well, no. Well, um, check this out, guys. We have, uh, there was an article in uh, Drone DJ with a drone pilot storm chaser made a cool video, a year-end video of the weather. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, Canadian storm chaser has put together a video from 2020's chase year in Ontario. What's his name? Andrew Mecklen. Get a share, Herman. He has a. Uh, what? Oh, okay. Let me, <laughs> Let's let me, see some let me of that video. Let's go to the videotape. Yeah, he has condensed 30 hours of footage of storm chasing down into four minutes of video. Some of the best shots that he has of uh, his storm chasing through the um the year 2020 and he compiled it all into a four minute video now now yeah. guys if you're wondering where this is this this is the great lakes yeah he's okay. in ontario yeah. yeah this is the great lakes yes and i i think he did a great job at it because i i wish you could hear the music i'm actually going to share the link because this guy goes around chasing storms he was talking about in the article how he used to do it with action cameras, you know? And yeah. you remember that movie, Tornado or whatever, where guys attach the action cameras to the yeah. top. Just watch, the, just watch the, rigs, weather the, the weather channel. Storm chases on the weather channel. Exactly. But, but I think- Actually do it for the thrill 
and some for uh, videography, you know. But this guy, I don't know, he's out there droning all cameras. Riding and this stuff. is yeah, this is right. This is the ca Canadian side of the Great Lakes. Yeah, okay, he has he does have some footage from here in the states, but he says the, the weather is enough between the United well, States. Also, and Canada. also realize this past uh, video log that he put together was 2020, and he he came out and he said. You know, yeah. he, he had to he had to resort to just filming on the Canadian side because the borders were closed. We're closed, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. because of the pandemic. Yeah, it was a point that you could fly in, but you couldn't drive through. To yeah. Waters. Hey, El Schmeghead just came up with a good suggestion there. Uh, right. You know, he says when he flies, he wears, I think, a vest uh, for uh, search and rescue for lost dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, Stevie, because the people you encounter are usually dog walkers, so they're really sympathetic, <laughs> and you're just out honing your skills, so you're ready for that next mission, dude. I would not like, do have that. Have you seen here. a little brown chihuahua? All right, stand I would, back. Stand I back. would I'm not do right that now. out here. <laughs> stand Stevie, back. in the Bronx? In the Bronx, really? I <laughs> wouldn't do it out them, here. Dude. Millions of them. <laughs> the last time on the we, street corner shaking like the a last time we saw a chihuahua. There was a pit bull on the scene. <laughs> um, if, if, you, if, you tell, <laughs> if you tell the Karens of America here in New York that you are looking for a lost dog, you're going to get a crowd of them. They're wait, hanging out with you. Can they help? Wick? Uh, which, where was he last? Man, he, imagine. They would, you would get a whole crowd. No, not doing it. Hey, Lawrence. <laughs> tell them Lawrence you're yeah. Imagine if you could... Can, if, if you can control an army of Karens, oh my goodness. Just tell them you're looking for a lost dog. <laughs> oh my goodness. We could conquer the drone police in one fail swoop, dude. Yeah, right? Okay. <laughs> you're right. Could, could you imagine if, if someone came and messed with you while you were flying, Karen, get him. <laughs> get him, Karen. All you got to do is find a dog. That's it. Hey, what's up, Logan Carpenter? <laughs> Pipeline restarted. And we're getting gas again. Okay, that's okay. that's yeah, okay. but but watch. You think the extra twenty five cents that got tacked on like day one is coming right. off? Do you think they'll soon? lower it? No, no, no. No, they keep going up. No, no we're gonna that's get shafted funny. all summer. Can you imagine an army a army of Karens? Wow, you could take yeah. over the world. What's up? That Ariel could be a Mexico? movie. Okay, drone swarm go. versus army of Karens, uh, oh, much like the current go Godzilla go versus the King Kong, world. right? Talk. Yeah, right. Could you imagine? You know, did I tell you that um when I was in Florida, I was looking for a place to fly my FPV drone, like the practice. This was in between the meetups, and I was just running around with family. Yeah. And yeah. I saw this parking lot completely dead, super early in the morning. So I, I go like drive to the back and I'm going by the stores and I see this big sign. It was a restaurant called Karen's. I was like, all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> when they start pulling up to eat breakfast and they see me in the parking lot, I'm going to get jumped. I was out. That's it. You're invading <laughs> my privacy. I, so I even took a picture of the sign. I got to share it on Facebook. <laughs> Karen's. I was like, I'm out. There's a sign. Not to, not to practice here. Hey, a sign, literally. You're watching her in yeah. the restaurant. Yeah. Give me a second. I have to. I have to step away for a second. I'm sorry. But you imagine uh, when they open up and all the Karens start pulling up in their Civics. And <laughs> oh, just imagine that uh, mimosa uh, brunch, Stevie. The <laughs> oh, Karens, man. You uh, feed you them a little alcohol. You don't want them to be lit, bro. Mm -hmm. And bad enough sober. Can they fit enough Toyota Priuses in the, in the parking? <laughs> <laughs> it was dude, a big dude, they're, into, they're into. They're into Teslas now. Okay. <laughs> They went to Tesla. Oh wow! Now. They advance. Yeah. Uh, well, they, some of them still have the uh, the Prius. Anything little. Uh, uh, what, what, what's that one called? The smart car. Oh. Okay. Uh, does that thing come with a remote? Hey, Sean. Uh, Lake. He's not here right now, but I truly believe that how E Hang got their start. What? Herman. With the smart car? The smart car. It kind of looks like all you got to do is put. Four arms and some props on it. Some it almost looks like an e-hang at that point. Well, they you? both look like they would be good for someone who, you know, only up had an upper body, no, no legs. Well, I, mean, I did you see, put your feet I, on that in that thing. Several months back, I did see one of the biggest guys ever get out of it, and I thought it was was a it a traffic car. cop? Okay, no, no, no. You know that's one because duty we, as we had that's a guy one duty as a city cop you don't want to get is the smart car. 
Yo, okay. I was laughing at him, and he saw me laughing. I was like, yo, where do you put your legs? He just started he had, laughing. He had to laugh himself, right? Yeah. He had to laugh himself. Yeah, yeah, I know. Hey, Chuck. Know. Hey, Chuck They're Chuck. thrilled over that. I can tell you firsthand. They are nothing but thrilled over that car. I couldn't have something yeah. like that. I have a partner? No, 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 no. no, no, no. You ain't fitting anybody else in the car. <laughs> okay? Well, First of all, both lunch. of you are wearing... Can you imagine wearing wearing a gun belt or vest... OK, uh-huh. and, and having a dad bod and trying to get in and out of that freaking car. We would okay? have to go to lunch and agree on the same thing. So that way he can start on one end and I start on, this on the other end because that <laughs> yeah. car is too yeah. small. And the reason I said da- dad bod is because uh, if you are from New York City, you know what New York City cops look like. OK, they have dad bods. OK, so. <laughs> hey, Sean, what's going on? Well, lost girl got a smarty car. Oh, does she? There you go. She got a smarty. Okay, so let <laughs> okay. me ask you a question. If you're over five foot Angela, six, where Angela, you put your the leg? last time I saw, I thought I saw Angela hugging a tree anyway. So, you know, Uh-oh. right? Yeah. She, where was she talking to us? We were interviewing her. What was she? Out in the she was out in the woods, right? <laughs> Getting chipmunks out of traps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get little legs out. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. What's Yo, up, John? Funny. How are you, bro? What's going on? John's got a good series going on uh, regarding flying over people. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that. You know, so. Only do it with an inspire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you won't call any attention to yourself with that one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. An inspire with two parachutes on it. She's campus. Yeah, she likes to camp. Definitely. I can't see. Yeah. I mean, I lived in the trails, man. I've hit... Ken El- Heron pinched yeah. my... Oh, wait. What kind of program? Oh, good. Jeez. I didn't know what he was pinching, El Smeghead. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> El Smeghead said, Karen Heron pinched my knowledge on connecting a Mavic Mini to DJI goggles. But I forgave him as he's awesome. Okay. Uh yeah, I was worried what Ken Harry was pinching helps make it. <laughs> wow. Nice rat moles. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Sean said the inspire would fly through people. Oh, I'm sorry. You guys couldn't hear me because my yeah. mic was muted. But I was getting ready to go into the second story, which had to do with drone simulators and which ones are popular and stuff out there. I want to tell you, the article goes on, and there's a list of some that I have never even knew existed. And there's in this list are the most popular ones. But what I have to disagree with with this article is the fact that they say um, your first purchase should be a radio, of course, and then a sim. For the radio, I highly recommend, rec- recommend the Radio Master TX-16 or the Tango 2 Pro. And I would ha- say I have to disagree with that because I'm not going to go out there and spend $200, $250 on a radio, not knowing if I'm going to like the hobby or not. So when they say they recommend that's if you know you're going to get into the hobby and you already have that thirst then okay i can recommend the radio master the, the tbs tango pro i have a radio that's freaking three years old the tyrannus qx7 okay yeah so so what i'm saying is even go lower than that mm-hmm. okay if this is your first foray into this hobby at all go out and buy real flight Okay, and real flight will come with a Utaba RC that plugs in via USB to mm-hmm. your computer, and you can fly with this very inexpensive. I think it's a uh, eight channel, and mm-hmm. uh, that's it, it's all you need a minimum it, of an eight channel. I believe rate. all in with the with the software is ninety nine dollars on Amazon. You can sometimes find a deal for it. See, so you can you can't beat that. And, and and this way, I mean, you you can learn that the application itself has, I don't know, something like thirty different types of drones, uh, from FPV to 
heavy haulers and okay. then tons of scenes and obstacles and games like races and stuff like that. So, you know, I, that's what I would suggest. Uh, 99 bucks. Like you said, you can't go wrong. Exactly. So, so now, now I'm not saying that they're wrong for saying that, but if you're not sure whether you want to get into FPV or not, what would you rather spend $250 or a hundred dollars? Like my radio that I fly with present day, I spent a hundred dollars for it. Right. I had a mod done, a, um, a soldering mod done. I sent it to California. It came back. And now I can fly and use it as much as I can. My radio's three years old, going on four years old. And it's just as good as yeah. my mother might call you. I just hit the climb. <laughs> and, 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 and that's what I use to fly with present day and use on a simulator. But getting back to the story, it's interesting. Oh, because- by the way, Sean. Uh, if mm-hmm. Google does want to sponsor this show, uh, we're, we're right there. We're all set. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm for that. Yeah, that will work. Yes, please call her. All right. Sorry. It's, it's mom's calling. She never calls. It, it's that's like the back phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. But anyway, well, getting well, back to the story, um, they have here, and and this is no way meant to say what order, this is Drone DJ's personal uh, opinion of what simulators you should get. And he has Velocidrone. A lot of you are familiar with with Velocidrone. And it it goes into saying how this this one is is for an experienced pilot. They recommend Velocidrone because Velocidrone, you can actually add gravity or the characteristics of gravity to the drone most similar what you didn't come down yeah end. well it depends oh, on the physics that they use which physics right engine now they use velocity drone is the only one that i know of off the top of my head that has incorporated gravity meaning a lot of these tricks and stunts that you're practicing on simulators they, they don't, don't always transmit to effect. Yeah, velocity yeah. drone is very good at that the graphics are decent but I personally, and number two on the list, list is liftoff. I can't see the chat now, so if anyone's commenting, if you guys can, can relay it back. But I personally use liftoff for the simple reason it doesn't compensate for, for um, gravity, but it has some of the best graphics. Right. Corey Mano said uh, Betafly Light 2 SE transmitter, 40 bucks, Velocidrome, 25 bucks or so, right. $65 yeah. total to get your feet wet. Yeah, exactly. there you go. Exactly. There you go. So, so don't think that you have to buy the top of everything. No, to absolutely not. You absolutely be in a hobby. Not. If you're a photographer, and I'll get back to this to the Sims, but if you're a photographer or you're thinking about getting into photography, the first thing you ask is, "What kind of camera can I buy?" And and the, there's two type of people that are going to answer you. One person is going to say, "Well, get something a used camera, some," and then there's always that person that says, "Get the nine thousand two RX R one." I got, I I have tons of people that have come to me about cameras, especially on the job, uh, and uh, you know, I I always start with a just a couple of questions. What, what do you want to, you know, what do you what do you want to get a camera? Exactly. Okay. What what are you using right now and what's it not doing for you? You know, what are your expectations? And, and I asked that before I ever ask, what's your budget. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because don't, don't settle somebody with an over the top system. And, and a lot of times, like, I won't say go buy that starter package there with the two lenses from, you know, uh, uh, Costco, Mm -hmm. because those are kit lenses. And I'd rather see somebody buy a cheaper camera body and a better lens OK, uh, then, you know, spend money needlessly. And, and then there's like I, I said, you, you know, there's tons of research you can do up online. And okay. folks, if you're looking at cameras What's and want to do comparisons and things like that, uh, DP Review and no, we're not sponsored by them, no, you're, you're but right. DP uh, Review, OK, Digital Photography Review. Uh, that is a site to check I've and them do out. your research. Yeah. What did you say, Herman? But um, you see. No, I've checked those guys out, but Tom, the problem with, with electronics now, and this is like going back to what we're just saying, why these people, people get into this situation, is that I remember years ago, you can go into a store 
and I'm going to buy a specific thing and you can go and talk to that guy in, in the place and you can tell him the things that you're asking. Mm-hmm. And they will set you up with what you needed. They, I mean, there was always somebody that could always upset Agreed. But nowadays, if you don't have product knowledge, you will walk out of the store with nothing or more this than what true. you need. So, because so, of the simple fact is the people in the store, a lot of them don't have product knowledge anymore. Okay. Yep. So, yep. They just so keep- we are very fortunate here in the New York City area because we have two, two major stores. And actually, I, I would say there's three locations I can vouch for in the New York area where you can get uh, dependable advice. Micro center? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Not when it comes to cameras. Okay. No. Oh, oh, oh. B and H. B and H. Adorama. And uh, Mom, okay. One and Rome. Burger Brothers out on Long Island. Okay. Okay. Is, uh, I know about Adorama uh, and B and H. I didn't know about the other one. The yeah, third. Burger Brothers yeah, is out in Syosset, Long Island. A uh, couple good salespeople there always steer you the right way. Mm-hmm. Uh, look for the older guys in the shop. Uh, they're not going to sell you something that uh, doesn't work for you. But uh, B and H and Adorama, uh, you know, uh, it's I have a lot of experience at both. Uh, more so at uh, B and H, uh, there's a guy Randy who works the Nikon counter there. He'll okay. sell you a Canon camera before he'll sell you a Nikon camera that doesn't work for you. Okay, uh, the counter help at B and H, okay, in the photography section, are all photographers of some merit. Okay. So, you know, these are the places you want to go. If you have somebody someplace in your area, like out in Vegas, uh, there's a camera shop out out in Las Vegas and it, 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 it's run by photographers, you know, so you got to feel it out yourself. That's next uh, level drone shots. Radio you know, it, Shack is, is somewhere you go. That's only pros. We don't we don't go to Radio Shack. Yeah, Radio Shack. You got to be able to find the one Radio Shack that still exists, which I don't believe is in this dimensional plane. Radio Shack anymore. is where you have forty plus years experience. No, that. no, 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 no. Really, Radio if Shack. you really know what's going on, then you bypass Radio Shack and you go straight to Tandy. Okay. <laughs> Radio Shack. What do I need? Batteries. No. You when you're done with Radio away. Shack, Herman, you then you then you. Uh, jump on over to Crazy Eddie's. Uh, crazy Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> That's where all the pros go. We're slashing yeah, we, the price. Everything must go. We we had a guy. We had a guy in New York City on Sixth uh, Avenue down in the Village. Crazy Eddie's, and his deals were were just too crazy. Uh, that's because he wasn't paying his suppliers. Okay. Yeah. So, everything must go. He, he was he seriously was, he said everything must go. Yeah, everything, and then he did too. He uh, bounced off to Israel before uh, they checked but then the they found him. No, but they got him. Yeah, numbers. He, it yeah, must go before they checked the serial numbers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These prices are so ridiculous. Everything must go. Now, and like it did, real. man. Stuff right out of there. <laughs> Tell me you didn't buy something from Crazy Eddie's. Yeah, His prices were insane. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got it. You, you since uh, we since we went squirrel. Uh, I, uh, since we went squirrel. I, I just we went squirrel. Those of you who don't know who no, Crazy yeah. Eddie is, every night during prime time, this guy would come on, and you would and see that, these commercials five, right. six times a day. Let me know if you guys can hear this. Play the audio. Crazy Eddie's greatest one. TV and video sale ever. Get a video recorder, color TV, large screen TV, video camera, even an audio video component system. Get it all on sale now during Crazy's greatest TV and video sale ever. Remember, we are not undersold. We will not be undersold. We cannot be undersold. Look at those and flat screens. Mean it. So get anything and everything in TV and video. Get it now during Crazy Eddie's greatest TV and video sale ever. Crazy Eddie, his prices are insane. That's not Steven, what would it be like to bring that little portable TV to the to Orchard Didn't Beach? Didn't that bro? guy lose his hair and started uh, Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> he came back. Nobody knew. Nobody knew that. That's Crazy Eddie. He changed his Dude, name. This guy, this guy took <laughs> off. After the game too long. <laughs> but, <laughs> it was getting down to the wire where they were starting to figure stuff out on this guy, and he bounced off to Israel. But, you know, and he, he hit, hit out on a kibbutz. He came back uh, until they came but and got Tom, him. Didn't he own apartment buildings out here? 
No, 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 no. You're thinking about the spokesperson. There were two different people. Actually, yeah. Crazy Eddie was not that guy. He was the actor who, who <laughs> did. And he was the guy who owned because they went after him. He right. owned the apartment buildings, and they thought he was really Crazy Eddie. Right, so the right. The media was they, stalking they him crazy. out, okay? When's, and it was actually... the documentary coming out on Netflix? Yeah, well, 30 on 30, Steve. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Big Matt says he camera from him. Ken Matt says he brought a video camera from him back in the day. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> on yeah, in Bay Ridge, 86 in Bay Ridge. Because they had stores <laughs> over New York. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 then the whiz. And then after Crazy in. Eddie's left, we had the whiz. That's true. Then the whiz came. Okay. <laughs> one thing I didn't know. One thing I didn't understand about the whiz: you, they they uh -huh. would never let you use the bathroom there. I didn't get that. But, okay. Yeah, their biggest what their biggest claim to fame was going after uh, what's that uh, rapper there uh, for for using that uh, their their whole uh, nobody. Nobody beats the wheels. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, they yeah. went after Bismarck for uh for using that. <laughs> That's their biggest claim to fame. They went out of business too. Why? Trying to give away shit. <laughs> hey, Welsh Rob, stick around he, for the latest deal, okay? That's what I'm reminded saying. me of Tom. That's messed up. That's All why right, I just did that. Going, okay. You know, yeah. going to the next story, Herman. Well, yeah. Um, well, drone drone makers are turning to superior three D printed UAS components. You know, um, as uh, as the uh, uh, capability and the popularity of drones grow among consumers and businesses, users alike, you are uh, unmanned aerial systems. Manufacturers can find themselves find it tough to meet the demand. You know, as a result, many of them are now turning to faster 3D printed parts for key. And these drones, all of these and drones Skydio, are 3D printed. And Skydio leads the UA, um, the UAS 3D printed uh, charge. They're wow. the first of the heavyweight drone manufacturers to uh, go that route of the uh, 3D printed parts. Now, according to this article that this was found in, um, Skydio, you know, has found a way to leverage the carbon fiber and they're optim they optimize the, uh, the strength and the weight, strength, weight, and the radio transparency for the Skydio X2. So when I saw this, I was like, wow, this is funny because I, you know, every, every, you know, in the whole drone world, we know that the guys who are flying, you know, FPV, you know, a lot of the stuff that they're doing is, you know, uh, 3D printed parts. Right. It, it's it's been able to cut costs and, and uh, you know, for them and, and certain many of the things that they need for that for, in the hobby. Well, for those and who don't know what this article, the two looks like, okay. this is it. Well, with this you, article, you, it talks about how they've been able to. Uh, come up with stronger and lighter components by uh, doing these uh, 3D prints. And it's also, uh, it's also cut the planning, planning to production time. So that's, uh, that's something because like I said, and Lawrence, you can contest to this. You guys fly these things. You got a lot of those uh, Three, uh, what is it? Uh, the printed the TPU. parts that they're using. The yeah, the TPU, using. right. You can smash these things up and get another one back up in the air without having to wait for shipment and all this other You're stuff. You're 100% right. The or Everything that's orange here is reprintable. Reprintable. Skydio's taking it past that point. See these kids? If you see how, how bellowed it is, that's because they're designed for sliding on. I'll probably get 100 slides on this before it even starts wearing down. But if it does, I have my boy print out another one. And I pop it right back on. Hey, Johnny, uh, let me know and, how that works out for you. as well is being held by 3D print, by GPS, rear antenna, all of that's being held by TPU. So to see these larger companies out there printing parts now, so, could, so you can imagine, um, so let's say hypothetically, now if you print 3D parts here, most of this stuff is a lot lighter. The right. arms, and, if the arms are 3D, right? If the arms are 3D printed, how much lighter is this? Okay, with the battery on here, this drone here is maybe about 
275, 300 grams. Okay, right. with with yeah, like TPU right. or printed parts, which are lighter and stronger. Yeah, I take that weight down a lot, which gives me a lot more battery time. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah, it transmits right, right to battery time. Uh, right. uh, Johnny. Johnny Dronefly says he's going to try to print himself a new wife. Just let me know what material you're using, okay, Johnny? No. Let me know how that <laughs> yeah, I, I want to see. I want to see that one because a lot of people out there don't know, but it's not just that TPU. If you have the money, they have metal printers, 3D printers. They have the some, CNC uh, machines. They have cement. Well, you have combination printers well, for well, building well, homes. You know what they what they have now is just incredible. I mean, you know, you you have machines that do three different things, right? Yeah. Three uh, D print, CNC mill, and laser, all in one you know platform. So, uh, uh, I I got to be a little quieter so the wife doesn't hear. But yeah, that's one of the things I was looking to pick up at some point in the future. What? Uh, Can you say that a little louder? No, I can't say that any louder than okay. now. And, and by the way, you're on headphones, so you can talk as loud as you want. She ain't hearing you. Okay? So, good try there. Good try there, Lawrence. When I first purchased the DJI FPV drone, yeah. I was thinking that like, if somebody could disassemble it, right, and measure, you know how they measure the thickness and everything at certain points, rebuilt, like just, you know, build a whole uh, shell with the arms and everything out of carbon fiber. And then just put it back together, but it has to be the right thickness at the right place because things will get, you know, loosen up. And well, and, that's the know, consensus right that. now, Stevie. What people think is going to happen to DJI FPV two? Oh yeah, DJI is, FPV right? Is, is that they're going to go? That's the thing. Yeah, it's going to be. That's what this article is talking about. How yes, yes, companies yes, are yes. doing that now with these things. Like that one video that Lawrence was showing there. They printed this whole thing out of out of carbon fiber. That, 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 well, that, also that, remember fiber. that when when you use conventional uh, <laughs> manufacturing methods to build these some of these components that we have in our current drones right now, it's a multitude of different molds that have to be used, right? Yeah. So yeah, there's the cost definitely. of the tools. So the tools are molds, okay, <clears throat> uh, and 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 that basically. You know, those things wear over time. So there's not just one mold made for for left right. arm front. Right, right. And and if you can print these things, you don't have to build in the same amount of structure depending on the materials, right? Exactly. If you can print carbon fiber, well, you see you're, this you're cutting the weight by anywhere from from you know a third. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tom, if you look at this to picture, you can see yeah. the arm is yeah. how it's reinforced. The motor yeah. cockpit is completely separate. There's compartment yeah. for GPS and whatever gizmos go up here. But this is a 3D printed drone, That's basically. Right. Now, how easy is it to get parts for it as opposed to um, as opposed to contacting DJI and saying, I need a whole well, shell? Yeah, and having DJI tell you that it was human error. Yeah, because once you get printed, the... Uh... You can just pop and make a print. Yeah, you you yes. keep the file. What is it, the STD? STL. It's the STL STLs. file. Yeah. The STLs. Yeah, you keep the STL, and every time something breaks, you just go back to that file. You load it. Yeah. And, yeah, and make it again. Just you like come uh, home, you load it. You you wake up the next morning. There it is, sitting there. You're you see what Welsh Rob asked? He asked, but if you put a carbon arm on a DJI drone. Then won't the weaker part inside break next? Uh, it, yeah, that's yeah. I mean. it, if that's totally all you did. Yeah, you have to totally disassemble the whole drone and take every piece of the frame and rebuild it into carbon fiber. Not just the arms, but the chassis itself. Right. And, everything else up. Right. And, and like I said, it has to be similar. It might be a little yeah. off. It might be off because the thing it's going to be lighter, right? And it's programmed mm -hmm. a certain way. So the things might need to be adjusted for sure. Well, well, look, yeah. it's the way, look, it, it's just simple engineering. Uh, you know, you you would look at those weak spots, and of course, that's where you would trust. But but the thing is that you know we're talking about where these companies now are abandoning those traditional manufacturing methods of using molds, okay, and going into three D printed okay, uh, mm -hmm. components because they can control the quality. They can get consistent output each and every time within mm -hmm. very, very small. Less waste, a lot less right? waste. Let, if well, machine the tolerances, if if the tolerances are tight, Lawrence, okay, 
That yeah. means you cut down on a lot of unnecessary structure within the mm -hmm. aircraft. Okay. Right. If you look at how those arms were reinforced with a graduated method, okay, that's a lot easier than if you had to build out this infrastructure inside of the component that a lot of it we don't see. Okay. Well, I want to point we out. We don't see a lot of what's inside I that wanna, drone. I want to point out something to to what you're talking about. Now, this is a TPU piece that was printed, right? Now, this one, if you notice, this is for a real steady mount. It, it's shock absorbing for for right. a GoPro camera. But a major issue with this print was the base was too thin, and these pieces here were too flimsy and flexible. As you see, right. this has no spring. Before, they used to have spring and wobble. So when you have the STL file, say DJI, you pay for an STL file to print the back hub or the, the camera mount for your, cam for your drone. That STL file is a CAD program, computer-aided drawing program, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Computer-aided design these. is what made that. You can, right. you yeah. can thicken these supports. You can thicken the base. Yeah. You can slim down this piece right here, which comes out and put a slot here for a filter. These are all things that people are being able to do with 3D printing. So imagine if you had the STL file for a DJI bird, what you could do. Well, you, you know what? Probably would out. never get that, but what well, well, yeah. manufacturers <laughs> themselves <laughs> are doing these things as well, opposed to... Well, don't kid yourself, because what, what you would see, and, and this is what excites me about it, if you go to this, this type of build-out, you can mod it so much easier, right? So, so now you have the capability of, like, like say Skydio, right? They're building some, some large haulers there. They're, they're doing some novel things. But say there's an industry requirement that, hey, we need to be able to add these hard posts on the device to carry these extra sensors or something like that. That becomes a simple adjustment of an STL file versus a rebuild of a tool set for molds. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I see that as the ability to customize also. And, and I think what happens, you know, what happens, Herman, just like anything else, somebody gets a hold of those STI, uh, STL files or reverse engineers them and mm -hmm. starts coming out with that's, their own mods and stuff like that. Right. That builds an ecosystem. Yes, it does. That continues to support, you know, that 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 drone platform. That's not right. always a bad thing for the manufacturer. I think I think people are already doing it because I saw a picture and uh, I try to find out what they did. But you know the little cover that comes off the FPV drone, the DJI FPV. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think somebody already yeah. recreated that with the GoPro mount, so it's all one piece. You understand? One with a GoPro mount, one with, uh, well, you're talking about, yeah, using the, yeah, they took it, the they, blade mount, the blade mount. So, yeah, 3D cameras, GoPro cameras, all that on there. They reverse engineered it. So, you get you get those yeah. uh, things that measure the gauge and the all scanner. that. And you, and you just go to town and it'll take a couple of tries, but once you get it, you save that yeah. SPL file. But, and you but go Stevie, and you just keep mass producing it. Going back not very long. You could take days and weeks to recreate that piece. Hey, Marcel. Because it was trial and error, trial and error, a ton of wasted material, right? Okay. Yep. And that's what scared a lot, of, a lot of us off from the 3D printing. But 3D scanners have gotten incredibly adept. Right. Where basically, you put this thing down on a little platform. It spins around. It, it, it looks at the inside and the outside, and yep. it builds mm -hmm. you an STL yep. file. Okay, Marcel so, is the perfect person to jump oh, in the we, conversation in the chat yeah. because yeah. he uh made an R2 unit. Yes, Marcel piece prints big piece. stuff. Yeah, he like piece by piece, like we <laughs> full size R2 unit. Yeah, full yeah. Size. yeah. he 3D printed. Yeah, it's Amazing. like up to my hip, it looks like in pictures, right? Yeah, so he knows yeah. about that piece by piece and then making everything fit. I mean, that's a big project. It is. Oh, yeah, I agree. Uh, drones, drones 86, yeah, drones 863. Yeah, drones 863 was saying is 3D printing really faster than uh, than molding uh, is a serious question. And, and then went on to say he was asking because people at home, it, it would take days to print a quad size piece. Uh, guess what people at home are doing? 
taking days to print things. I know people okay? that start so their you're printing not in the morning, them off Tom. Tom, right. okay. you're right. I know yeah. people that start their printing in the morning. This piece yeah. right here takes eight and a half hours to print. Just this piece yeah. right here. And of course, when you Justin, learn how to what, print, what Justin has a factory going on, right? No, uh, no, no. <laughs> this one he printed. He printed me one also on on here. But yeah. they take. I know people that go to work. They start that print, yeah. and this will take eight hours. So by the time you come home, this is just finishing up, and then they'll start to print for these feet, which you right. print four of them at a time. That's another two to three hours. It, it takes time. Well, they, see, the good thing. The good thing the, is. Oh, is man. if if you're using an established STL, like if you purchase an STL, yes, we'll, we'll get an open source STL, and it's already proven. Hey, that's a great concept. I Marcel set it up in the says morning. Six hundred and seventy parts. Six hundred and seventy yeah, parts on that R two D two unit. Wow, amazing. Now, that's amazing. Um, according to this article, right? When to answer that question, uh, in many times, yes, they found that it is. It is more cost effective to print them than yeah. to go through the traditional route. But we're talking about the big players, okay? We're not talking right. about your home printer, right? Right. Yeah. The only exactly. point I was exactly. making, but even with was... the home printers, guys, now like I said with Lawrence, instead of having to buy these things, it's quicker. You can you can do it at home instead of waiting for it to come ship. Yeah, but someplace. let me let me just throw a little bit of caution into that, okay? You know, we're talking about the perfect world here. We have, like I said, the established STL that you load in the morning. And you come back at home and it printed oh, out. Batman helmet. Not the one that you set up in the morning, came home and find when you come home, there's a huge blob of material sitting on the bed. That's true. You see uh, what he so, said? So you just wasted a reel and a half of freaking material <laughs> think of, and, and got nothing but uh, a, a glob of goo. Is yell at you about, okay? <laughs> a glob of goo, right. Yeah. But did Marcel I'm says trying just, to make a volcano. <laughs> Marcel just printed a Batman helmet. He said it took five days of printing in three pieces. Uh -huh. To do a full size right, Batman right, helmet right. that actually fits. Is that for any size bucket head, or is that just like <laughs> you got a head that's head a seven and a quarter? <laughs> okay, yeah, 300 by 300 by 400 printing resolution. Put, put a Yankee logo on that and sell it to me. <laughs> make a logo. No, yeah, really Marcel, the gorilla glue it, it to the forehead. Yeah, <laughs> gorilla, gorilla glue, a white yeah. Yankee stamp, and, yeah. and somebody in New York will buy it. Definitely, I'll, I'll buy it. You don't have to go far. Somebody <laughs> in New York. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Herm. Listen, Herm. Listen. Let me ask you a question, Herman Lawrence. Hey guys, on that new app, huh? How you feeling after hundred years with the go for, huh? You you missed we the first talking. half hour. You we missed were, the first right, half okay. hour, that's, Ray. That's why I'm asking them now. So I missed that. I'm asking them now. About that, Ray. We were yeah. talking about that earlier, and I was taught. Um, Stefan from the Flyby Guys that's had did right. a video earlier this week or or late last earlier this week on how the set you can't see how many satellites you have because it's so far. Oh, yeah, I saw that. And we saw were that. talking about the battery app, the fact that you cannot adjust the battery from twenty percent to thirty percent, which means if you're out a quarter mile, wherever you are, and it hits 20%, it's going to go and return home, yeah, and like you may have, not make it home. I like to have a battery warning before it gets critical. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But the only warning you have is to look at the screen and see it get red. That's all you have. That's the biggest exactly. problem. Exactly, and that's not yeah. cool because you may be too involved in what you're doing. Like Herman was flying home. I pointed this issue out to Herman, and Herman said, well, mine is below 30. Let me come home. And maybe 100 feet from us, Herman, it said it's returning dead. to home and went up to 400 it feet. Was Herman had to cancel it to right bring it Right, you know all of that, the the wreckage and all that, with the, 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 the yellow submarine the and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, it was right there, and oh, we were wow. right there by that little the little bump out where where you could stand and look out over the water at the park mm -hmm. and look at the um where the submarine is at. I see the drone right there, and it just it was basement went up. He was heading home. Went into return. It, said, it oh. didn't say nothing else. It said it stopped and said returning to home. To home. <laughs> and you know how fast that thing rise, um, yeah. rises, and you know how fast it comes down. That thing was at 400 feet in about four seconds, five seconds. Yeah. That should, that should <laughs> return to home altitude set for? Yeah. Okay. But it, for some reason, they made the normal mode faster. 
not the sports mode, but the normal mode is is faster than the regular air too. It drops faster, it goes higher faster. Uh, another problem I'm having, even if I put it in cinema mode, is a it still moves too quick, and it doesn't yeah. have the option to adjust. Cinema the, mode, the you don't cinema have the same level like of adjustability. Yeah, yeah the, you know Matt, the, that Matt, that goes back to what I said before. No yard, no pitching when, when settings. We bought, yeah. When we bought Phantoms and all that, even the the, the Phantom Three um, standard, those were con, those were consumer drones. You understand? Now we start talking this lingo about prosumer and, and 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 consumer drones, and now we start dumbing stuff down to create a market. It's just like like times, I said man. before, the Camry was never Toyota's big car. Now no. it's their big car running in a NASCAR. Why? Because you moved your big car onto something else and you mm -hmm. push this into the forefront and say, oh, this is what we put out for everybody to love. It's not I, I just was talking about it's, it's, you know, it's not a pro feature. Right. It's not Definitely a pro not. feature, it's Definitely a common not. sense feature that needs to be in there. And I'll say Brian, by it. And like I said, that camera that camera on that drone, I'll put my fan four up against that camera any day, any night. You Anybody want to put it up? Because one has an aperture and one doesn't. That's my point. So they put that one in sensor. And me too with the with the pro. They ain't no better than the pro two. Nah. Ain't no better than the pro two. I, I don't know, Ray. I don't All know, right. Ray. It's it's listen, advantage the reason why I said that SS. how many how, how long that drone's been out now? I ain't seen nobody put up no good night footage, no really good day footage but you guys. Gotta look hard at me. I listen to me. Huh? I've been on YouTube man. probably more than you, bro. Let me see some night footage. Aperture, Let me see some. Aperture's not going to cause, cause well, the heartache everybody's to, making it out to. I'm going to throw a silly top people, drone out there, though. Half the people don't know how to right spell now, aperture, Ray. I'm actually waiting for the weather to be nice enough at night. Or else I right. back. I want to see that. That's what I and I'm gonna do that with you too. Done it already. I'm, I'm gonna I'm take not, you to another yeah. Ray wants to make sure you're not doing a bait and switch, Lauren. Yeah, right? yeah, because yeah, people's doing sure. that. Okay. People's doing that, saying, Oh, this is a Matic Air S2, and I know there's another drummer. I ain't stupid. Well, I was born that night, but not last night. You <laughs> know, I was dropping some photos lately on Facebook, and they were all from the air too. Because I'm oh, just really was. I said just wanted to ask you, yeah. That yeah. was, that's because I'm so backlogged. Like, I just don't have the time to drop all the pictures in the computer and get down. Yeah, yeah. I figured that, Stevie. I figured that. I'm just, I'm just clearing out what I had from the Air 2, just starting mm -hmm. to get the Air 2S stuff. So the Air 2S stuff is coming soon. Um, You're I right, Matt. Yeah, but um, I'm going to tell you, I was flying uh, with a friend of mine that has the 2 Pro, right? Mm -hmm. And now this is about the transmission. Okay. I could not get as far as he did, but when I realized that, because I'm like, where are you? So I, I went over there and I see that he was like behind these, this property. Right. And I'm trying to get to where he was at to go around to catch that sun rising. You know, mm -hmm. I couldn't even get to where he was at, but we were trying to figure out what route he took because the route matters because some of these uh, smaller buildings they uh, sell their rooftops to like T-Mobile and stuff like that. And they put these antenna systems. So you sometimes mm -hmm. going in a different direction, you lose service, but he won't because he's going in a different angle and he's getting closer. You know, you know how it is and, yeah. and everything like that. So I'm trying to figure out the route, but I'm telling you right now, I could not two times we went flying and I couldn't get as far as he was getting. Wow. I have O3. So I'm going to test this theory. What we're going to do is we're going to go the same exact route. So there's no, you know, there might be, it might be because he did go a different route, but he got to where I was trying to go. And he had no is control. Is the controllers possibly banging? Because me and Herman had that issue before when we were flying in that park where Herman and us was out there where my Maverick 2 Pro, he was having a problem with his V2 with his Phantom. But it was like, because you guys were just too close to each other. I, well, I walked well, maybe they were close to each other. That's what I'm asking. We, yeah, the Jones wasn't close to each other, but maybe they, they was yeah. too close to each other. We walked away from each other, but I definitely went over to him at a certain point because I was yeah. I was going out there, right? And mm -hmm. like Steven was saying on his video, how you really can't see how many uh satellites you have. It's like a faded white lettering. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the RC it almost has some detail around it. It's almost like it has yeah. a, like, a whiter trim, and then it's faded in the middle, like yeah. almost in the center. Yeah. So I'm yeah. watching the RC and I'm trying to get to where he's at and it's going orange, orange, orange. 
You know what I mean? And I'm like, all right, back up because I can't see the satellites and I don't want to get a flyaway, you know? So yeah. I'm monitoring that at all times. And everybody in the chat, I recommend you got the Air 2S. You ain't, you're not going to see the satellites, but monitor that RC and those, mm -hmm. you know, it goes up. Yes. Upward. If you start seeing orange, do not play around. You yeah. are grown because yeah. you cannot see how many satellites you have. And this is the reason why DJI offers that flyaway package right now. They know these drones are capable of flying away. They never offered that with the Phantom, never offered that with the Mavic 2 Pro. All of a sudden, these new drones came out and they offered flyaway packages. Like, really? The thing so what is, are you saying, Ray, that flyaways are just, ha just happening on these drones? No, yeah. no, no, flyaways yeah. have happened. I'm, I'm just, no, I'm just saying they advertising for this particular drone. That's what I just said. They came out. They didn't do they, it for the other out. drones. No, no, they actually did. They came out with flyaway on the last uh, Air 2, okay, because it was offered to me. That's what I said, on the Air 2, not the Mavic 2 Pro. That's what I said. No, 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 Only with these new drones. They they didn't realize that it was an additional revenue stream for them. Okay. Come on. Look at, look at. Look at DJI FPV, right? Uh, by by the time I'm done paying for replacements, I bought another drone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know it's a revenue stream. Yeah, that's, that's why what I said. That, that was the business decision it's... behind the flyaway. Yeah. Was they were losing money to Allstate? Okay, and they said, "Oh, we'll keep the money ourselves. We'll charge you mm -hmm. three times what Allstate charges because mm -hmm. at the end of the rainbow, we'll send you a drone." Right, and you're still in our ecosystem. This thing is something going going, on with the going to, to going to Allstate when you when they get to get all their money back at Allstate. DJI has to worry that they're actually going to spend the the money on buying another DJI drone. Well, speaking about Allstate insurance, they got people. You. Gonna, you're going to start playing premiums for drones in the future for Allstate. Oh, you're, you're, you're not going to get you're not going to get PID insurance anymore. No, you will get it, but you're going to pay premiums. Nah, I spoke nah, to her. Okay, away. that's what's your point. I know what you're saying. I'm just saying what I heard. Soon. Yeah. Okay, that's what I heard. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, if you have an umbrella policy or you want to do it, exactly. yeah. yeah, because you know what? If they can't, the thing with the insurance industry, right, Ray, if they hit mm -hmm. you in the pocket for something, they don't hit you in the pocket just once. They hit you in the pocket, you know, they'll pay you out that premium, but the next time around, you start to realize your premiums just went up. Listen, mm -hmm. Tom, I got one one up for you. That's true. Put it, put it in your home insurance and report it mm -hmm. stolen. Break a window. <laughs> Get the window <laughs> replaced and the drone. Next yeah. next question. Now, mm -hmm. listen, I got, I got another thing to tell you about. Um, the views and opinions heard tonight are not necessarily the views and opinions heard on panel tonight. I suggested you do that when you go there. So, um, I, got a, I got another thing to tell you about the transmission. Now, when you're doing these multi shots, like these uh, Raiders three, small town, um, what, what do you like the 360 shot, the globe shots? You got to understand you're talking it. about that whole sequence, yeah. When the it's master it's doing, shots, master, no, shots. not the master shots that is actually physically moving. I'm talking about a picture when you're doing, mm -hmm. oh, okay, and you're doing the wide picture and the planet picture. You know, that the drone, if you're looking at it, the drone is doing this like it's moving around, like it's taking like a picture, a little here, dance, picture yeah. here, doing a little dance, yeah, right. Yeah. Keep in mind that if your reception is your transmission is very low, your RC is dropping and you just got it just right. There's a chance you're going to lose reception while it's doing that because the antennas are moving. <laughs> I had a friend. Yeah. He, was taking <laughs> exactly. those, he was taking one of those multi big wide shots, pano shots or whatever they call it. And all of a sudden it just disconnected. The screen went black. He got nervous. <laughs> he was like, so so let I'm me ask awesome. you a you, let me ask you a that question. happened to me, Stevie. That happened right. in the park. My See, that drone is flawless. A lot of flaws in that drone. My so, screen was yeah, black. but no more. Uh, again, Ray. No, it happened to say. Oh, you bought it yet, Tom? You bought it? That was that was a pro also, but no. Did you buy it yet? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm not fighting with you, Ray. I didn't fight with you, bro. I just asked the question, bro. I just asked the question. I said, "Hold up, hold up, bro. Right. Let, me, let me get some popcorn. Let me get some yeah, popcorn." Exactly. You know, me. I just asked the question. I said, "Did you buy it yet?" No. So, so, but my question is, Stevie. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm here. Smart controller <laughs> or the standard remote? 
Which are you using? It was it was uh it wasn't me. It was a friend of mine, and he had the yeah. two pro, and he was using the standard remote with the um okay. with the phone. because Ray, I have heard, I've definitely heard of issues with the smart controller that mm -hmm. you don't get the same range mm -hmm. that you I do. That. And I now that would make sense to me because I was talking about that's the Android, that's how, the Android how thing. Built, that's why how they built O three into the smart controller when O three mm -hmm. wasn't even around for the right. smart controller. Okay. Uh, we sold so, that. So you know, I, I, I've I've heard a lot, Stevie, about <clears throat> very limited range on the smart controller versus the uh, supplied controller. But the smart the controller smart was controller supposed to have every drone. It has yeah. less. The smart controller, from what I understood, has less range than everything out there. Right. Well, it definitely yeah. has. It that. definitely has less range on the. That on the down too. like that to me. You definitely get no range. No, 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 no. I, again, uh, again, it's a spectrum of orientation. That's hey. not an issue. Whether they're up or down, they're still as low. Try to put that. Try to put the other controller, controllers, the antennas down. And see what happens. As <laughs> as far as spacing, right. okay. It's the flat planes of the antenna. Well, the antenna is in the flat, to, right? That need to face oh, the direction no of the drone, right? Exactly. But yes. but the thing is that yes, I experience limited range versus the standard controller, even at the Air Two. And and now what concerned me was, if I had limited range with the Air Two with my smart controller, and now I'm adding a different transmission type, meaning mm. O3. Have they just like bandaged my, you know, it would uh, seem propped so. it like up, they, propped up my smart controller they just, just to rigged it seem like it works works. for now. Yeah. And yeah. as far as Michael is concerned, uh, yes, it will return to home. But the thing is, is that, you know, you're shooting. It's the supposed shot, to return right? to home. Yeah, you can't yeah, yeah. guarantee that. Right, right. But with the with the two. I go to China. I go back home to China. When the well, two we never pro, have been able to. Yeah. When the two pro yeah. uh, disconnected on my friend, you know, he was just like. What the hell's going on? I had signal, but in the in the process of the drone doing this little dance, yeah. mm -hmm. antennas somehow and obstructions, oh, right? All and of a sudden, his screen went black. His screen went black, and he went standing on something that you know did the whole yeah. have the yeah, antenna yeah. in the air like he was standing on a brick. <laughs> so, so my my thing, the thing I do whenever the screen goes black, okay, you usually lose video transmission. Well, before you lose Connection. control, okay? correct, correct. So it's the true. number one thing I do, and this is part of you know that that airspace management, right? Trying to figure out so that right. you don't right. panic. Right. The mm -hmm. first thing I do when the screen goes black is I gain altitude. Yep. Okay. Regardless, I gain altitude. Even if you can't see, just go up. Even yeah. if I can't see. I go up as long as yeah. you're okay? in a park. As long as I'm not flying in a tunnel, Steve, yeah, yeah, yeah. or under the True. under yeah. the tent. Right? I've been saying that for years that yeah. a lot of people yeah. lose signal and they panic. And the best thing you can do is go up because if That's you're it. already headed up, it will reach its ceiling. Two step and process. And two step two step process. And I a, learned that with FPV. You regain your signal by going right. up. A rise in altitude in an attempt to regain your signal. B, mm -hmm. if you do not, then press that return to home button. Okay. Which is going to rise and up. Then, and, and then hope you hear the beep, 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 the beep. 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 Exactly. <laughs> and, and wait a few minutes. Don't put the remote down on the side and wait for it. Stop sweating. Yeah. Every wait. minute is like an hour, though. Wait, wait a minute. See come if the image comes back up. <laughs> if it does, the next thing you do. Hit the pause button and see if you regain control of the drone. If you did not regain control or, of the drone, hit return or, to home again or, and stand there and watch the screen. Or or you can do like Herman. Or you can do like Herman and sprint towards the building. Hold on a second. Yeah. Hit return to home again. <laughs> If you hit the pause button with sweaty hands and it pauses in the sky, but then you leverage your controls, you know, yar a little, pitch a little, and you don't get any reaction from your drone, hit the return to home button and hold on. So you're talking about the air too and all of the pause because the fan line got this pause. 
We I'm talking, talking about, about any pro. damn drone. Yeah. Because okay. actually what we're talking about, Ray, is look, this is cyclic, guys, right? We got to realize it first because a new drone comes out. It is the best thing since sliced white bread. And then the bread goes stale two weeks later because now we find all the flaws which haven't been addressed. That's why I still got my four rolls of bread over okay. there. My four rolls of bread still sitting there. And two for two and a fan. I have not brought those last two But I'm talking, I'm talking human <laughs> nature here. Right? I tell you. Remember when we had this conversation about probably like episode 92? I said, I'm not buying another one inch sensor drone until they give me an aperture control. I don't care what they come out with. I don't want another I don't want another mini. This is an upgraded mini. That's an upgraded mini. That's all I got to say. How about, how about, because him and I got to go at it today. How about I one up you with, I ain't buying another one inch sensor until they come out with a micro four thirds. I thought I said that a couple of shows ago to me and Matt. They said that. Because, Ray, you're coming along on that ride with me. I know yeah. damn well. That's why I okay. said, Tom, we're thinking the same way. When you didn't buy this drone, I said, we're on the same way you left right now. You're yeah. not going to fool me. You ain't going to fool me again. No, nah, you're not. You're not going to fool me again. So I passed on the last two drones. And now they're talking about a mini three. Yeah, okay. Listen, yeah, okay. yeah, but I'm going to tell you from all my drones, my, my lineup right now and everything else could go. Everything else yeah. could go. Yeah. The Air 2S, right. the FPV drone, and the yeah. Phantom 4 Pro. Right. Though, right. I'm right. keeping right. those three. The rest, have you seen pictures on Facebook of all these drones I have on beds and tables and shit? They gone. Right. I'm but, selling mm -hmm. all of them. Because but, but those three, here. I got something compact that has a one-inch sensor. Yeah, I have something yeah. that to just whip around until I hit a tree, and then I got it works for you. I could do jobs like if somebody is serious about some serious money jobs, I'll bring the Phantom and just make sure that I get everything right. Well, at least put the Phantom on the table when they're looking, and then right. you can well, my Phantom and my Mavic Two Pro. Look, Look China right. Club, everything down. Right. Right. Well, <laughs> Look, but but here's what I said earlier: the drone is the drone is the drone is the drone. The the app is what makes the drone. It's part mm -hmm. of the drone. Yes. And if we're going to call this a consumer drone after calling those consumer drones, <laughs> that app has failed the consumer heavily. I understand what Matt is saying about they removed that feature, certain features to make it uh, easier for some people. Not consumer you know drone. What? Right. You know what? All you did You're right, was Eddie. You took the training wheels off of the bike before the kid was ready. That's to what ride. you did, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. you did. You know yeah. what it is, Herman? You know what's got you too is you're late to the game on this one because baby, this fly this fly app has been out for a while and it's been that's what I said, Tom. Tom, Tom listen, Tom, Tom, listen, not to cut you off. That's why I asked Lawrence and Herman yeah. in the beginning yeah, of the show. That's why I asked Lawrence and I'm the beginning of the show because they never had a fly app drone. We, we all had the air as the two and all that. It's I not, just asked them how they feel about it. The game that That's it. That long. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, I'm, no, no, I, and I don't mean it in any other way, but saying, well, I know what you mean. But, but saying, saying that, that your reaction to it is exactly what it should be, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it has been out so long, but right. we've been plagued by that but, app. But I, right. I listen to guys talk about app. it, they love it. You're right. They don't realize well, what they they're haven't not seeing. But I bet you, I bet oh, you, Herman, we're talking about a group of people who the first thing they started with might have been a mini. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or it might have been an air. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. They've they, never experienced the I agree with Tom. Tom. You know, Tom. Tom, it. Tom yeah. they don't know what real caviar tastes like. But guys, no. it's just like <laughs> it's just like you guys haven't experienced the fly. The, the pilot app, yeah the pilot app and you don't realize the capabilities that are born within that app right, right? and then there's 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 other apps and third party apps you can lay on and you know that's why we were saying right I, I don't know if uh Stefan is still in in, in, in on the stream but hey, it's, so, you know, from Brazil he might have it, it, it's a matter of that HUD you know DJI is also looking at a release of some HUD based software, okay, meaning heads up display where you get more telemetry in the center of your visual scope as you fly, okay, but at the same time, reducing the amount of clutter. Now, Click I have a like significant button, guys, issue with the lack of contrast on any of their legending, 
okay? Because what you need to do on an interface like that is you need to provide a level of contrast to always separate that textual content from the background. Whether that's a shadow box under it. I agree. Whether it's it's got to be, if you are depending on that telemetry to fly safely, then let me goddamn see the telemetry <laughs> so I can fly exactly. safely. Right? Yeah. And, and you know what? Look at the demographics also, guys. We're not a bunch of teenagers flying DJI drones. You know why? Because teenagers can't afford 1200 freaking dollars every mm-hmm. six months. Okay? So, you know, we're talking about is that what guys, it is? these eyes are, are, aren't getting better. Okay? Yeah. I need some contrast on that monitor to see what the hell I'm supposed to see. <laughs> Come on, DJI, yeah. get with it. Where, where'd you go, Ray? They're listening. I'm coming right back. I need to check something out real quick. Hey, guys, I got one more here for you. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Zip line in Nigeria. Crossroad states partners for medical drone delivery. Now, Zipline has expanded service in Nigeria, <laughs> partner with Cross River State. Sorry about that. Distribute vaccines, medicine, and blood products to more than 1,000 facilities statewide. This is the second partnership from uh, with Zipline in Nigeria. This follows the one in February where they had an agreement with the Kanduna, Kanduna State. Now, Zipline leads the way in Africa for drone delivery. Since medical, 2016. Medical supplies and blood uh, blood sampling, blood products, period. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they've you know, COVID been tests, in, uh, et cetera. They started out in Rwanda in uh, 2016, and they just keep expanding. They're here in the United States, and they've gone on now. This, this whole partnership here happens to been, uh, you know, came about from so-called the great foresight of the uh, and collaboration of their uh, state governor and the commissioner of health and the director of general uh, primary health uh, agency. So well, this, this is a, a, a big thing for Zipline and eventually Zipline will probably be covering the whole entire continent. Well, I want, to, want, I want to point out something about Zipline. They f- specifically quoted in this story that we are, we are on a mission to transform healthcare systems. Right now, everyone's trying to figure out how you can get your donut faster, your slice of pizza, your screwdriver and shit like that. And Zipline is the only company out there that's focusing on medical delivery. Because no. if they can do it in Africa, where it yeah. takes days if not 24 hours at a minimum to get to a place where you can fly a drone in three hours that yeah. makes the difference and there well, are many companies out there uh be real quick Herman. there are many yeah. many companies out there right now that are trying to deliver everything from a freaking screwdriver to, to freaking uh, um cashew nuts but no one's talking <laughs> about how no one's talking about how to get They're these. They're not the only company, hospitals. by the way. There are several so, companies Matt, out Matt there. Matt is doing it with in uh, this realm. Yeah. yeah, but but look at some of the. You know, <laughs> you, you really got to look at a company like Zipline mm-hmm. uh, to understand what they've been able to accomplish. So, Zipline has actually flown uh, over nine point two million miles. So, guys, uh, to put that into uh, some relative yeah. scale. That's 373 times around the planet. Okay, <laughs> they they've made over 135,000 deliveries mute, uh, and delivered yeah. almost yeah. three quarters of a million products. Right. Uh, well, and and their surface area can cover almost 25 million uh, consumers. So you know you're looking at uh, a company that's that's not just on the African continent. We've talked about it. I, I think no less right, than here, four or five Walmart. shows. We've talked right. about Zipline, but we've talked about them because of the significance of the contribution they've made and that to there humanity. are other companies doing this as well. Uh, and and it's already been proven. So, uh, you know, this is one of the check boxes when we talk oh. about criminals using drones. Yes. Let's also remember that people live because of drones. Yeah, okay. true. But I want to point out something else. I'm trying to get the CEO dude off of here and show some actual footage. But I want to point out that 
the accuracy of this zip line drone is confined to the space of two parked cars. Right. They can drop your package between two buildings if they have to. But if you think of two parked cars in front of your home, it can drop in that area accuracy accurately every freaking time. Okay. So, no you know, way. <laughs> so our question is as and that to, makes it, that's important. No, it, yeah. it calculates all of that. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah. Yes. It, yes, the it only thing is, remember, that this, this is quite effective in rural and suburban areas. Thank when you. you talk about densely populated urban areas, I still have issues, guys. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I mean... That's why UPS will never take off with it in New York City. No, look, look, Ray, come on. You can already get your package in two hours after you uh, yeah, hit the buy, the buy button on Amazon, right? In Amazon now, City. yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so, but, you know, look, instant gratification is buy instant now. gratification, you know? Return Somebody's got to, somebody needs a pair of socks, like, but you, you uh, see, but like I, five I, minutes from now. I just <laughs> want to count it, kind of counter <laughs> what Mike says from Fly Zone Drones. Said so, yes, plain and simple. The FAA wants us completely out of the sky. I have to disagree with you with that. Don't agree. And the reason Don't I have agree. to say that is because there are too many prosumer and consumer drones being sold in the world to eliminate that market. Now they may restrain or restrict where you're going to fly. You will be able and to fly. As someone can. mentioned earlier in the chat that they're working towards the 250 gram or less. Um, well, had a good. Well, well, I told you, that, you know, Lawrence. Sean's I, doing a whole I, series I, on Geek Spana I on you flying over people. Uh, and, and, and I fifty that sub two fifty is going to take off in the, in the yes, yeah, and, and yeah. But what's going to happen is, I honestly believe, you know, we're looking at this the wrong way. I honestly believe you'll actually be able to fly in more places at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. Eventually okay. down the line, I, yes. I would. The more everybody is on the same page, and and I, as far as carving up airspace, okay, as far as carving up airspace, realize something: we've been relegated to to a ceiling of four hundred feet to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. the what's being looked at at the federal level with Department of Transportation is not to eliminate that airspace, but to cordon off a section of airspace above that and using the right AI and augmented reality to right. build in the systems because now we're talking about we fly below 400 feet, right? If they okay. can fly between 500 and 700 feet, we also have manned aviation who operates in that arena of space mm -hmm. from time to time. But we're talking about aircraft operating between the 500 and we'll say arbitrary 700 foot level that have airworthy certificates attached right. to their to aircraft. Operate, to operate okay? in the airspace. Hey, to Mr. operate Brophy. autonomously and safely within that buffer zone. So well, I, I, don't honest... see, I don't see the 400 feet being taken away from us. Yeah, well, in the beginning, we'll be relegated to these safe spots if you don't have the right controls on your aircraft but i think once you have the right controls on your aircraft um, you're going to have a lot more airspace Tom, to I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you even if they knocked our airspace down to 300 feet 350 feet we would still have more than enough room to fly now now what i mean by a uh, mikey fly zone drones that i i disagree with it i just don't see them eliminating the consumer market as far as drones, there are now there are companies that have been like a Nafi that's working with the military that have gone strictly industry and, 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 and enterprise and stuff like that. But there's too much out there. There's too much money that would be lost. Well, so let's that, just hope me, that let's you're... just hope that 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 they don't plan on doing this. We all pray that they don't. But that, if you think me, about it, it was funny. They've been making it a lot safer for us to fly and a lot easier for us to fly, haven't they? So yeah, I, I don't whole, really see them getting rid of it right, just right now. They're not going to get rid of it, but you can understand where Michael is coming from. Yes, from yes, I, do. Obvious, yes from I do. From an obvious point of view, all worried. most yes. obvious feel like we're getting squeezed. And that's because the big money is with the big companies. Yes. And what do they make off of us? 
Well, DGI is making money off of DV. us, not the FAA. You know what I'm saying? Like, realize something. Yeah, no, us, no, us no, no, no. Our drones. Stevie, everybody don't is the government. It, it don't bring the government money. You know what I mean? Stevie, us, us hobbyists. Stevie, everybody is we, actually where they were four or five years ago. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. Just I'm, arguing, just saying, I'm just no, saying the energy that's no, coming I understand from what you're saying. No, I, I, I understand what you're saying. It's misread, say and that's what I believe. The things that guys are talking about, and I and I looked at what was going on four or five years ago was that they were telling us that these drones are aircraft. Guys are like, I'm not flying an aircraft. It's not an aircraft. It's a drone. Mm -hmm. It's not an aircraft. And didn't want to follow aircraft rules. So now you were supposed to be flying on these AMA fields, but guys that fly drones don't want to fly on those fields. They want to fly mm -hmm. someplace else. Right. So what happened is guys, they, they straight out, they went and did their own thing. Now we've come full circle. The rules have changed. Things of this, that, and the other. You're now accepted that you're an aircraft. And guess what? Guys are back to flying now in those same airfields again. Yeah. 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 But OK, so fly zone drones. Uh, yes. If you do not have any of the remote ID controls built into your aircraft by a certain date, the only place you'll December be able to December 31st, 2020 will be okay negative no 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 final rules are uh phased <laughs> in. not all the rules are phased in by that date okay remember it's a almost a, a a 34 month spin but right but but the thing is that yes if you choose to fly an aircraft without those specific controls in the only legal place you can fly would be in one of those fixed site locations it's if you don't have any of the controls or a drone you've purchased in the last couple of years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. there's no way to enforce that. Okay. Because you don't have any controls in your damn drone. So if you choose not to fly in one of those fixed sites, that's on you. I ain't your keeper. Okay. So that's one thing. The second thing is once you do have the controls, then you've met the requirements flying in other places because it can broadcast that remote ID. Of course, we can have another two-hour discussion on remote ID and how that's the evil of all things, okay? But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about airspace. And when we talk about airspace, we, the consumers, don't have the money to implement, okay, the artificial intelligence routeways to fly in the same airspace as manned aircraft. I I'm sorry. We are not capable of flying in the same airspace as manned aircraft and maintaining the safety of the national airspace. So we belong True. where we belong. Okay? And the commercial carrier, who has nothing but deep wallets and the ability to partner with all these technology companies, are mm. going to build the technology to safely fly in that space above us, between us and the man and also commingle with man aircraft above us. Okay. But we'll be the beneficiaries over time because that technology trickles down, which means the better it gets at being safe and keeping the sky safe, the more places we're going to be able to fly. Okay. True. And that, to me, at least, that's, at, least exactly. at least that's what we're hoping. That's the direction that they're headed. But before we get out of here, Sorry, I want to do one more story and this is for all you dji fpv flyers you guys who fly your dji um air units there was a video that came out i have the link for it i won't put it until after i discuss the story but apparently there's a way to hook up your dji goggles version one and version two goggles so that you can now output it to a computer which means if you can output your goggles to a computer, you can stream. So I have not personally tried this because I don't own anything on the DJI goggle spectrum, whether it be version one or version two. But I'm about to put a link. I'm about to put a link to a video. And this video was leaked drone shots. I actually got the. I give him credit. I got the link from him and I knew nothing about it until I saw it. But this guy goes into the shows you how to go into the settings of your DJI goggles, version one or version two, and set it up so that you can have an output. And those of you who are in the video and cameras, you know, if you have an output and it goes to a computer, you can stream it. How was it, Eddie? What happened? I didn't. I, I missed Eddie something. Eddie tried it. 
He tried it. Now, Eddie, did it? It does work. It okay. This is good to know. So now there will be a rash. Here's the link. Bookmark it and 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 do what you have to. But this is important because people are complaining. DJI stopped us from streaming their uh, our flights, and right now it looks like they're getting back into that format. That link that so I you're posted saying, there. You're saying you fly your drone wearing the goggles, ingesting the video feed into the goggles, and then outputting that. YouTube. into a laptop or a gotcha. computer because I, I thought you were talking about watching youtube videos on your goggles no 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 so eddie now that we know it works which is very important you need to get out there because right now there's an open market on youtube for people that are going to be putting this footage out you uh, understand what i'm saying and if you can catch that chain you can you can ride the viral boat, the viral um boat, Amen. as far as um subscribers and stuff. So you gotta Talk you gotta about, ingest that video into a DVR then. Basically, yeah. if you're out in the but field. there's the link to it. Click yeah. on it, save yeah. it, put it in your watch later. If you have a DJI, if you if you have a DJI um version one or version two goggles, mm -hmm. you have it right here. Eddie Nunez says it works. It's the same as the smart controller. 55 inch output. TV. That's right, drone shots. Okay. Okay. So not bad to watch a YouTube you video on that. But there are some other uh, I know people watch. Uh, I actually know people who take their goggles like the fat sharks I have, and they take the output and they stream it to a flat screen television. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. So everyone that's flying oh, who's not yeah. flying, yeah. and everyone that's not flying can actually um can can watch the flight. That's so you could do that. You could do that with the Phantom Four. Yeah, that guy yeah, did you that. Always could by do the Verrazano, by the Verrazano yeah. bridge, he set up yeah. a big TV, and yeah. as he was flying, he was projecting it on the TV. So yeah, my brother house, house a bunch of times. Maybe we, we, we do in that. My house. We do that on a regular basis on the job. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, it's All right, right Mike. Have a great one. It's that time. We're using a, a, a basically uh, an HDMI. Uh, dongle coming off of the device yeah. to a transmitter yes. uh, to yeah. a wireless receiver and then outputting that uh, to a multi-source one more time we can go to multiple out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yes he did all right yeah, guys, it's, it's about that time stevie it's what's time as new york as that hat you're wearing nothing. nothing much what i'm having for dinner tonight come on what? now Hot come dogs? on your steak White yeah. Castles, baby. Oh, <laughs> White Castles. It's better than Castle a high of, okay? and, and as, I thought you was having a, a suppressed next, hot dog and a big fat uh, New York no, strip no, or dirty, something. Dirty dogs? You can't even find listen, dirty dogs listen, anymore. Tom, Jeez. Now yeah. you have you have time to get right before the next show because you have to Sunday. So you eat the White Castle after Stevie, the show. <laughs> Stevie, do you realize? I'm your, do you realize? Your people belly get pay, right. <laughs> You'll be yeah. here. Yeah. People pay for those kind of treatments, man. This is like a high colonic. This is a clean out, dude. You know what? Just get some A and D on Tell me, no, 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 no. Once you got a bidet, you go no other way, dude. Uh, they can talk about toilet paper Later, shortages Mike. all they want. If Thanks you got water squirting up your ass, you don't need it. No uh, more that, Tom. No more. We almost <laughs> got out of here without that being heard. Yeah, oh, uh, no, you can't. Yeah. Without you can't. <laughs> It's, it's that it's that time, guys. Um, uh, everyone in the, uh, I, 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 you guys here on the panel. I like Sunday. We'll be back on <laughs> coming in talking about uh, Tom's toilet issues and uh, and drones today. <laughs> <laughs> you all need a clean out from one time yeah. or another. Okay? Hey, you're flying on that fly app. You sure will. But <laughs> you right, go an airborne. That's okay. That. Ooh. You guys, you guys in the chat, I'd like to thank you for stopping in and hanging out with us tonight and every other night. And we'll see you guys on what uh, Sunday? We'll Sunday on, on Sunday on uh, Novice Quads with Sunday night with those guys. Anybody in uh, want to say anything? Anything? Before um, we I think I said enough, Herman. Don't yeah, you yeah we know. We out. We okay. out. Okay, we're out of here. Good yeah. night, everyone. And I'll we're see good. you next Peace time, out, guys. On Phantom Flight. Right, Tom. One on one.